this time tomorrow, flight 435 from London Airport will have arrived in Australia. In the next 24 hours, these passengers will cross the world in air-conditioned comfort. Soon after takeoff, the plane will pass over the home of Tim Williams, a company director who in a few months' time will also be flying from London to Australia. But he'll be travelling the hard way. If you're wondering why anyone should want to fly 12,000 miles in a 50-year-old aircraft, here's your answer. 50 years ago, pioneer airmen from many countries flew from Mildon Hall to Melbourne in the world's first big air race. It was a major international event which aroused the interest of kings and princes. Mildon Hall Aerodrome, where 20 racing planes are gathered for the Melbourne Air Race, is honoured by a surprise visit from the Prince of Wales, a flying enthusiast of many years standing. Now, Mildon Hall gets a bigger surprise still, with the arrival of the King and Queen. Their Majesties are introduced to the pilots of the big Dutch planes. And they leave the aerodrome after wishing good luck to all the famous men who will leave at dawn. The flag's down, and the greatest air race in history is underway. A few of the aircraft which made history then are still flying and to commemorate the 50th anniversary of that great race Tim Williams and his co-pilot Henry Labouchere are going to fly a 1930 de Havilland Pussmoth over the route followed by the race competitors. It's likely to be an eventful journey but the pilots are very experienced and well prepared. I've always been interested in aeroplanes and in fact uh, I learnt to fly when I was at school. I used to go and work in the, in the holidays on a farm and all the money I earned there I used to go and spend down at my local airfield learning how to fly. When you make plans to fly a historic aircraft 12,000 miles over oceans, jungles, mountains and deserts, your safety is the first thing you think of. The aircraft which will be used for the flight has been completely rebuilt so now it's as safe as it ever was. It's a very simple little aeroplane, and uh, two of us sitting in here are going to be quite crammed, but uh, especially a bloke like me. We've had to make several modifications to it. We've got all the old instruments in here, but in fact we shall be have using modern avionics because quite a lot of the countries that we should be visiting require that you use modern bits of uh, radar and, and radio and so on. The first solo crossing of the Atlantic east to west was done in one of these things, with the chap sitting, in fact he had this bit here completely full of fuel, and he sat right in the back there. And uh, rumour has it that he took off with two packets of ginger biscuits and uh, a bottle of brandy and uh, spent 30 hours in there and uh, was in fact the first person to fly solo in that direction. Today, that spirit of adventure lives on in Williams and his co-pilot, another enthusiast who runs a successful business, rebuilding and maintaining old aircraft. I maintain and repair Tiger Moths. I rebuild Tiger Moths. I've rebuilt uh, five Tiger Moths now. Totally, every nut and bolt. I bought my Tiger Moth in Australia. At one point in its career, it was one for ten dollars in a raffle. It was then crashed while towing and repaired to a somewhat uh, questionable standard. Then I bought it, and I used it all around Australia. I spent a long time in Australia, and um, I'm very keen on uh, getting back there. But the journey won't be easy. Planning the route and getting permission to fly over or land in 15 different countries has already proved to be a time-consuming job. Plan to keep to the coast, if possible, all the way. If the aircraft is to reach Melbourne safely, nothing can be left to chance, and the pilots have found it pays to study the small print on maps very carefully. Yes, it, and it gets quite hairy when it goes inside here because you're looking, getting yeah. towards Cambodia and... Uh, and uh, yeah, they're not, not very friendly messages over here. This one here says, uh, warning aircraft infringing upon non-free flying territory may be fired on without warning. Yes. So, um, really, it might be quite a good idea to keep... Okay, keep this side of the air awarded. Remember yeah. that. Yes, right. <laughs> I'll, you drive that bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 23 hours after the start in England, Melbourne sees the great 12,000-mile air race won by Scott and Black. The 
the GH Comet has completed the whole journey at an average of 159 miles an hour, smashing all long-distance flying records. 19 hours later, the Dutch plane arrives to gain second place. The great airliner has covered the distance in three days, 18 hours. From Antier and Mall, the pilots are highly gratified by their welcome. Well, Mr. Mall, what do you think of, of, uh, of the reception we had here? Well, I think that's uh, all very wonderful. I thought so too. Yes. A unique event in aviation history. Now, 50 years after the events you've just seen, the oldest Pussmoth still flying is preparing to make its longest flight. A television film crew will record the pilot's progress, making an entertaining record of a unique journey. An adventure which no one can ever repeat.